there's an understanding out there in the public that type 2 diabetes equals carbs. Carbs are the vilifying factor and reducing carbs is the most important thing in people's mind for type 2 diabetes. And yet, in studies, you see the dietary patterns that have a lot of carbohydrates compared to omnivore or low carbohydrate diet tend to do better. Why is it that if we eat beans, which has a lot of complex carbohydrates, or whole grains, which has carbs, or fruits and vegetables, which have carbs, they tend to be better in epidemiological studies for our body and lower the risk of developing type 2 diabetes. Where is this misunderstanding coming from, and what is it in fruits and vegetables and whole grains and legumes that seem to be protective? It drives me crazy when I see influencers doing that because they're really compromising the health of the population. What we know is that the lowest rates of diabetes in the world are found in populations that actually eat relatively high carbohydrate diets. It's not carbohydrates per se that are the problem. It's the quality of carbohydrates that is an issue. And of course, animal products like meat, dairy has some carbohydrates, but meat, poultry, fish, eggs really have virtually no carbohydrate. So they're not going to cause your blood sugar to go up the way that carbohydrates are going to cause your blood sugar to go up. And so we see this kind of flatlining of blood glucose with these high fat diets. The problem is, is that they don't deal with the issue of insulin resistance, which is what is really driving type 2 diabetes. In fact, these kinds of diets make it worse. Diets that are lower in fat and higher in carbohydrates are actually very effective in treating diabetes if the carbohydrates are of high quality. And so high quality carbohydrates are simply carbohydrates that are intrinsic or found within whole plant foods, like the legumes, fruits and vegetables, and whole grains and nuts and seeds. And what makes these foods so protective is they contain fiber. They contain prebiotics and phytochemicals and antioxidants. And we talked about dysbiosis, oxidative stress, inflammation, lipotoxicity. These foods put a, a lid on all of these drivers of diabetes. Low quality carbohydrates, on the other hand, are carbohydrates that have been stripped of the protective components within them by food processing techniques or refining. Refined carbohydrates are associated with overeating and obesity. They're associated with metabolic associated fatty liver disease, and that's fatty liver disease that isn't driven by alcohol. But they're associated with increased insulin resistance, metabolic syndrome, type 2 diabetes, poor blood lipids, and cardiovascular disease. And we've got tons of studies that have shown the greater your intake of unrefined carbohydrates, the lower your risk of diabetes. And the greater your intake of refined carbohydrates, the greater the risk of type 2 diabetes. We need to flip the switch there. And if we think specifically of, of sugars, we just had this huge meta-analysis, or it was actually an umbrella review, that showed added sugars have significant positive associations with 18 different endocrine and metabolic disorders. Half of the sugar we consume in North America is actually from sweet beverages. Unfortunately, the vast majority of carbohydrates people are consuming are in this category of low quality or poor quality carbohydrates. And we need to flip that. We need to get our carbohydrates from whole plant foods to provide protection and reduce our risk. Beautifully stated. What are your thoughts about wearing a continuous glucose monitor? I've asked you this question, so I know the answer, and I'm not going to act surprised, but I would love for you to touch on that. You and I chatted at one of these conferences. Everybody's really promoting the concept of wearing a CGM to keep an eye on how their glucose goes up and down, and I really think that it's pathologizing a normal physiological reaction to food. You're the expert. You're the dietitian. I would love to hear your thoughts on that. Like, for example, there's this lady, she calls herself the glucose goddess, and her videos basically are a cartoon representation of how your glucose levels go up when you eat a banana. 
and how it comes down. And then if you eat a piece of chicken or high fat cheese, it doesn't go as up and it stays normal. So that little peak seems to be a pathological reaction to eating a banana or an apple or a cup of fruit that has carbohydrates. Separating the concept of carbohydrate from that food package, which is phenomenal, like you said, it comes with flavanols, it comes with vitamins, it comes with fiber, it comes with water, for goodness sake, which is great for you as well. And just focusing on that carbohydrate creates unnecessary fear and unnecessary nutrition information overload and vilifying foods that are exceptionally healthy for us. So I just want to hear your thoughts on this concept of CGM and glucose spikes in our body? First of all, the CGMs have been wonderful for people with type 1 diabetes, very helpful in that regard. But to say that everybody should be wearing a CGM to me is just absolutely ridiculous. It's not only unnecessary, it creates such anxiety and we don't need to be doing that. If you're really concerned about your blood glucose levels, you could get a glucometer, test it a few times, see where you're at. But I think it's really going overboard. And then in terms of blood glucose and the ups and downs and all of that, our bodies are really amazing machines. And our bodies are designed to take in food and that food, the nutrients and energy from the food get absorbed into the bloodstream. And then we're able to send it to all the cells that need energy for whatever reason. And of course, when we eat, our blood sugar is going to go up. It needs to go up because we need to be getting energy to those cells. And then once the energy gets used, of course, it's going to come down. And yes, it's true. We don't want to be eating a diet that causes these huge spikes and sudden drops. So this would be where you're eating really highly refined foods and drinking a lot of sugar sweetened beverages and things like that. But we do want a gradual rise and then a gradual fall. But that we get when we consume foods that contain fiber, that slow the absorption of the foods and allow for a gentle, slow reduction. The goal isn't to flatline our blood sugar. Glucose is really the most important form of energy for the body. So I think we really need to be more balanced with all of that and recognize that the body has an amazing capacity to handle carbohydrates and it has an amazing capacity to heal itself. And it will do that if we provide it with whole foods, particularly whole plant foods that are really concentrated in all of these compounds that are so protective to human health. 